What is going on, Danny Crew? It's Danny Drew here, and we are back for a lesson of the week. And that is how to calculate a winning position. One of the most underrated things I've ever seen when it comes to Catan is your ability to look at an opening position and to calculate the board in a way that is advantageous to you. So we're gonna go through this. There's gonna be some examples. I want you to pause when you need to. Yeah, let's dive into it. I get a lot of questions that say, hey, Drew, how do you look at a board? What do you see? What's important to you? I'm looking for two main things. For the sake of this video, we're gonna look at a first pick and dissect that. But I think these are pretty well-rounded principles in any position. So I'm looking for two main things, production. So a minimum of 10 pips. So I've given you the spots right here, right? So you don't have to start trying to calculate. Here they are, here's the spot. And then flexibility. So this means things like resource diversity, getting multiple different resources, port options, complementary outs, and more advanced than not necessarily for this video is potential trading partners. We'll talk about that another time. These are the main two things, production flexibility. All right, so let's get to the examples. Let's get moving here. We have a board, okay? If you need a pause, what I want you to do is look at these production spots. We'll list them here on the right and place them out. When someone says, Drew, how do you see this board? This is how I see it. I very quickly find these spots and I kind of put like a little tack on each spot just to know, okay, where are they at? So immediately I can tell you, look at this board, 9, 5, 10, 6, 5, 11, 8, 10, 4, 6, 9, 3, 8, 5, 10, 8, 4, 3. Boom, I see that immediately. So take a moment, see if you can orientate yourself, find these spots, pause if you need to. So boom, there we go. Here's what my brain does. It just puts a tack in all these spots. I see them. Okay, they exist. There's those candidate spots. Well, that's only half the equation which is the second half is we have to see which spots have the best flexibility for us. So we have the criteria here on the right. We're going to go through it. Resource diversity, right? This means how many spots have multiple different resources at high production. 6, 5, 11, it's two sheep and a wheat. Not very diverse. And same with the 8, 4, 3, it's two ore and a wheat. Now those are what I would say kind of ore wheat sheep spots, but doesn't really hit the diversity. Same with the 10, 4, 8, kind of nice for a road game, but Again, not diverse. And then the three spots we have is the eight, five, 10, three unique resources, six, nine, three, three unique resources, five, nine, 10, three unique resources. Okay, that's pretty diverse. Next is the ports. Generally as a rule, you wanna get at least one, three, one, two decent two ones, or one really great two one. What's nice is those diverse resource spots also have some pretty good ports. I would say the nine, five, 10 has a three one on both sides. 8, 5, 10 has two decent two ones, which is nice. And the 9, 3, 6 has the three one here as well. Cool. So there are some port play with those particular spots. And then complementary outs, this is where it gets interesting. In order to understand the outs, the options you have, what you have to do is you have to calculate. You have to be able to look at a board and say, okay, I'm going to place this out. I'm going to look at where everyone's going to go potentially and determine, is that a position that is complementary to my first pick. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go through an exercise with our candidate picks with these kind of criteria and see if we can narrow down what's going to be potentially the best option for us. Let's say you have three or four candidate picks, which is great. What I would normally do is trust on my intuition to say, what do I believe is the better pick? And then start from the top down. I don't want to necessarily go randomly, I want to see if I can minimize the amount of time to make a decision. So I really like the 8510 stands out to me for a few different reasons. So we're going to start calculating that 8510. We know that's going in first, no big deal. And because we said the 9510 kind of meets that criteria, it's flexible, we like it. Boom, second's going to take it. third has an interesting option here, which is if you notice, there's these two spots of ore. we have the 843 and the 963. But the wheat is not that great. This 6511 is actually the, the only other really decent wheat spot. What third can do is they can take the 6511 and make the claim that no matter where fourth goes, they can get one of the ore spots. Fourth could go 693, 438. Questionable if that's actually a winning play though. So we're, we're kind of calculating with some kind of reasonable expectations here. Now as fourth, you want to find your advantage here. How am I going to win this game? It looks like a lot of players are kind of doubling down on the weed and the sheep, going to be playing some kind of development card game. Kind of better I go a different direction and take roads. So we, here we have the 10-4-8 and the 6-9-3. Six, 
claiming I'm going to take a lot of space on this right hand side of the board. I'm going to have the absolute best wooden brick and I can easily trade to get those early settles to bring my efficiency up and to get what I need done. I really like the setup. I would 100% in a heartbeat play this setup. Also, I've I've taken this to a few different people that are really high level players. They agree. Don't be fooled by the lack of weed or sheep. The thing is, there's a lot of weed and sheep on this board. So green wants to take the other ore spot. 843 makes a lot of sense. And then here is second. Most likely we'll take the 9411. The idea here with the 9411 is that it's partially offensive and partially defensive. The idea is that you don't really want to give first the 9411 just because they have all five resources. It's very strong. They're picking up that really good brick, the best ore. Mm, not good. But it does give blue here second a really good game. They get all five resources and they get a pretty good balance of ore wheat sheep. And then here is first, you get something like the 6311. All five resources, you get the starting brick, and you could also make a deal if you want to point down and say, hey, blue. I would like to get the 10311 and, and give you the 1092 and we're not racing. Or if you want to keep it simple, you point left to 411. That is a particular way the board could pan out. I think this is pretty reliable. I'm pretty happy with this calculation. I trust this. Next. Okay, so we've calculated one position, but the reality is we need to look at the other spots, right? This is part of the process is to, to say, okay, this is good, but what happens if we go somewhere else? Just to make sure. What happens if we start with the 9510? We did kind of say that was a really good spot. Let's take a look. So as first, you know, you get the 9510. Second now takes the 8510. We've already discussed that's a really good spot for a second and first. What's funny about this is it doesn't actually change much with this particular calculation. It's the same situation. Green wants the 6511 to take the ore. Red's gonna go Roadmaster, 843. But here's where the wrinkle happens. Now blue gets to pick. And since blue gets the 8510, he doesn't have to worry about the defensive play from the 9510. So blue just takes the 9411. So the, the last position, we saw that the 9510 going second was able to play somewhat defensive. But now because the 9510 went first, second gets the option to 8510 and the 9411. This is a much stronger position. Absolutely much stronger position for blue. Probably you would want to avoid this as white, in my opinion. You can see how just one little change in your placement and using just some basic calculation shows you that by taking the 9510 in first, it's probably going to lead to a more difficult game. And frankly, I think I, I, if there's anyone I would be here, it'd be absolutely blue. Blue is a very strong position, has the port flexibility that we mentioned, the wood port and the ore port, also has open hex spots, right? An open hex here, open hex here. By the way, all the roads are generally being pointed to the, towards the coast to keep it simple. Obviously, blue would point left here, and then white most likely is pointing left here. Taking 9, 5, 10, not our best pick here is first, but we still have one more spot. What happens if we take the 693? This one's an interesting one because some things do change here. So 693 goes as first, and then again, remember, we know that the 8, 5, 10, the, the 5, 9, 10 are really good. 8, 10, 5, like it. But this is where it gets different. Right, because originally when the third picked in the previous boards, remember they took the 6511 saying, I'm gonna get the ore. Well, the issue is one of the ore spots are gone, leaving only really the strong ore spot with the 438. Gray's gonna do something similar, but different, which is they'll take the ore first and then make the claim, you know what, I'm gonna get the wheat on the way back. Pretty logical, and I think a lot of players would do this. Red saying, okay, I'm gonna double down. I want the best, you know, more or less high production. I want the best wood here. And I'll kind of have to trade my way. I've got a road network. I really like this setup. And a really good shot, too, that they might be able to build up here, get to the sheep port, potentially. I think this works pretty well for red. As mentioned, green will take the other spot. They want to kind of complete the Orweed sheep game. But then look what happens here. That 8-5-10 second gets the 9-4-11 again. And we've already kind of determined that this wasn't really favorable. Feels very strong for blue. Feels very strong for second. And really, not that great for first if we get the 3, 10, 11. And the problem is, if you calculate this, red starts with the two wood and the brick. Like, let's say we point up here, right? Saying, okay, we're gonna go for the 6, 3, 11. Well, red is one brick roll from road, road on you. And that's really not good because you don't have any settle spots. You lose the 6, 3, 11. Blue can start with the brick and then drop a road here and take the 10, 9, 2. You don't really have a good game. You, you're not playing where we cheap the strongest. You've lost your ability to have a road network. It's a risky and unfavorable position here if you take the 693 as first. Ultimately, 
the 693 has similar issues to the 9510, which is blue comes out better. So to get to the point, look, if we do this exercise, what we find in first position is that the 8510 is the winning pick. It offers the best options for us. It balances the board the best. And the only way we could come to that conclusion is if we go through this exercise and do the calculations. And at first, it might be daunting. You might feel slow. That's fine. Take your time. What's important here is that you get used to doing it. It's like anything else. It takes time, but if you do it enough, you will get better at it and you will become more effective at it. This week, guys, I want you to spend more time in the early game. I've seen too many people just slam down. No, I'm going to take the oar. When the reality is, if you get better at calculation, you're going to find opportunities. And this is where really good players like myself excel. Have fun with this one. Take your time. This is going to be a great lesson for those who want to get better at this game. I appreciate it. If you're enjoying the channel, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe, keep growing. I'm going to keep trying to just expand this community, expand the content, make it better and more accessible for everyone. That's all I got to say. Get out of here. All right, Dandy out.